Hey everybody, welcome to the presentation. This is a compliment to this week's podcast, number 11, about, uh, in my opinion, how nonprofits no longer need to go after pro bono grants consultants because of all the available information that's out there nowadays. Uh, just to summarize in the podcast, I talk about how Oh, a little over 20 years ago when I got involved in grants, uh, locating foundations and public grants was kind of a pain in the ass just because there wasn't a whole lot of information online. The internet was still brand new, and it was really the grants professionals who served as kind of a gatekeeper to different funding sources. You know, unless a nonprofit had the resources available to purchase the various foundation directories, or if they had that information available at their nearby library. It was just kind of a pain to to go after grants. And um, so it made sense for new and developing nonprofits to look for consultants who could help them out and guide them on a pro bono or low-cost basis. But nowadays, there's just so much information available online. I think it's better for the newer nonprofits who are just starting out, you know, and everyone starts from scratch. There's no, there's no shame in not having the resources to hire a grants professional. Uh, But there's, because of so, there's so much information out there. I think a lot of, you know, a lot of nonprofits would really benefit by teaching themselves how to find grants, how to apply for grants, you know, the whole the whole spectrum, rather than spending that time going after, you know, free help from consultants. And I was recently on Guru. I, I subscribe to this service just in case anyone needs help with grants. Um, and I came across this, uh, this posting where a nonprofit is looking for someone with Excellent written skills to complete their grant applications for their nonprofit, five to ten hours a week, and they're willing to pay two dollars to five dollars per hour. What you know, <clears throat> at two to five bucks an hour, you're not going to find the type of professional help that you need. I know a lot of people will. And there's eighteen quotes provided, and we all know how this game goes. They're going to provide quotes. And say, yeah, sure, I can do it for two to five bucks an hour. But as soon as the project starts, uh, the consultant is either not going to work the five to ten hours a week that the nonprofit needs, or they're going to come back and say, look, I just I need more money to do the searches, to complete your applications, and to do all the follow up. No one is going to work for two to five bucks an hour, and uh, especially when several of the people that are providing quotes. Uh, this is a U.S.-based nonprofit. Most of the people that are willing to do the work are either from India, the Philippines, Venezuela, which, you know, okay, but then are you really hiring professionals that, you know, professionals from out of the country who can then find U.S.-based foundations to help this Nonprofit. I mean, the whole thing is just is just really weird, for lack of a better term. Uh, so, you know, rather than looking for this really inexpensive help, why not? <clears throat> excuse me. Why not teach yourself how to write a grant application uh, or how to find grant funding? Um, I mean, like right now. Hold on. Right now, I can go to Google. I've got my browser set up to search on Google. And I can type in how to write a grant proposal. Bam. Here we go. Now, the first first couple search results are advertisements which is no problem. But then you get down to 
various regional commissions from local governments. Um, let's see, you've got a university here. You've got uh, just scrolling down some of these resources are going to be you know, professional like foundations or educational institutions. You have here uh, grant writing for dummies written by Bev Browning. I don't know her personally, but I do know that she has been involved with grants longer than I have, and she is well-respected in the grants community. She wrote a whole book on, on how to write, you know, how to write grant proposals. Just go to Amazon.com, click on Grant Writing for Dummies. There it is. Boom. Order it. Two-day prime shipping. It's in your hands. It's ready to go. And you can learn from it. Uh, and some of these you have to watch out for, like how to write a winning grant proposal from Inc.com. Eight years old. Eh, I mean, it might still be good. But look, at all this stuff here, and this is just the first page of search results. All this stuff is here. This is stuff that was never available 20 years ago to people. I mean, you had to really scratch and claw to find information on how to write grant applications uh, or how to complete grant applications. Excuse me, my phrasing. Uh, and you really had you kind of had to learn by doing, which now you have this wealth of information online which will then allow you to kind of accelerate your learning curve. You're still going to have to learn by doing. You're still going to have to get used to it just by jumping into the process, by seeing what type of information different foundations want, and just going for it, just experimenting, trying, completing the applications. You know, you're probably going to fail more times than you're successful, but each each failed grant application is a learning process. And that's how you get better. Now, all right, Dave, well, you're so damn smart. Where do you find the foundations? Well, fine. All right, well, if you really want me to get deep here, I will. Let me go back to my search engine. How to find private foundation grants. Boop. Jackpot. All right. Now, just going to stick with the first page of results. And here you go. Okay, so again, we have an advertisement on the bottom. No problem there. Uh, I would just skip over the ads. Of course, if I <laughs> if if I advertised using Google keywords, I would probably say, "Oh, you absolutely need to stop on my my page." But uh, I don't. Actually, I don't care if you visit my website or not. I mean, I think I have some good information on there for free. But um, this is not. A video to pitch myself. This is a video to show you how to find uh, some foundation money without spending any money. Anyway, so first result, private foundation grants. And you have to, whenever you start searching for grants online, you always have to be a little bit skeptical uh, and a little bit uh, leery because there are a lot of scam artists out there. So we're going to click on this. And see what happens. Now, um, hmm. all right. This has a long list of foundations. Wow. All right. Hmm. And just checking the destination links. Okay. Daughters of... Cincinnati, uh, goes to foundationcenter.org. Okay, so some of these links are going directly to the foundations. Some are going to the foundation center, which has, 
its own directory of foundations, which is fine. So you can check that out. This one I noticed earlier. Um, <laughs> so that list seems to be pretty good, although it's, I mean, it's hard to get an idea for where those where those foundations are going or what they're involved with. It's just a, a name, alphabetical name list. You don't know what types of projects they fund, what regions they fund in. You don't know anything about them besides their name. So that's not too helpful, but the list itself is helpful. Now, when you go to the home page for this, um, for this company, uh, I don't know anything about these folks. Um, the, the homepage kind of makes me a little suspicious. This, the formatting of it, the way it's laid out, all these multiple colors, you can apply for as many grants as you want. Many people are not aware of this. Now it seems really sales pitchy to me. Grants never have to be paid back. Uh, no credit checks, no collaterals, no cosigners. This looks to me like they're trying to sell you something. Like the, you can get free money to do whatever the hell you want to do. And I I try to encourage people to stay away from that because um, really the only, the only folks that benefit from this kind of stuff is the company putting the information out there for sale. So uh, member access, I don't know what any of this crap is. So anyway, you might want to just, like with this website, you might want to just use the list of grants, say, or foundations here, or just blow it off altogether if you get that oogie feeling like I'm getting. All right, so back to the search results. Uh, we have grants to and from private foundations at the Council of Foundations. This is a well-respected organization. And they have a lot of good information. Um, most of their most of their stuff is behind a paywall. <clears throat> is behind a paywall for members only, as you can see here. Uh, so that if you're trying to find a lot of information at no cost, um, you have to make a judgment call on whether or not you want to spend money on a council and foundations membership or to pay to access this. Um, depending on the cost, it may or may not be worth it to you, but let's see if we can find some better information for free, because that's what, that's what new and developing nonprofits need, is information at no cost. Now, search for private foundations. Here we go. Okay, so interestingly enough, Wells Fargo has a page about private foundations. Search by program area and state. All right, cool. Well, you know what? I am interested in, let's say, education. And, oh, all states is fine, so let's go. Okay, cool. Now what you have are the foundation names, the program areas, the states they serve, and any limitations. So this is kind of cool. Um, <laughs> like this Bartlett Foundation, Pennsylvania, limited to 501c3 organizations in Berks County, Pennsylvania. All right. If you're outside that area, now you know that one is not a good fit for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Grants, okay, so Bethlehem Foundation, California. Grants are made to nonprofits operating in and benefiting, benefiting the senior community of Sonoma County. Oh, that's a beautiful country up there. All right, hold on. Let me just click on that and see what we get. Mm -hmm. All right, so now you get a little more information about their deadlines, their mission, limitations. Mm-hmm. Program areas. Okay, we selected education, but they also fund in health and human services. And click in this tab, we get their grant 
um, guidelines. All right. Foundation information. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, that's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyway, so you don't need to listen to me sitting here going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh, <laughs> while I search around. Anyway, so this, this is kind of cool. And I, my guess is that all these foundations... Uh, on this website, on Wells Fargo's website, they're probably the they're probably the trustee for a trustee and or advisor for these uh, foundations. So this is not going. I doubt. I mean, I can't say this for sure, but my guess is the the foundation directory on Wells Fargo site is not you know a comprehensive uh, list of all of the private foundations throughout the U.S. but Uh, If, you know, this is a really good place to start, especially if you can start your application online. I don't know what this does. Let's go ahead and click on apply online. Oh, oh, crap. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm 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 not going to create a new account just for the sake of this. I know, I know. You're probably saying, oh, you're you're a quitter, Dave. No, actually, I just kind of want to move on to the next thing. So here's here's an example. You can go to Wells Fargo's site and remember let's see what search term did i use how to find private foundation grants well that's pretty simple enough all right now there's also hold on um mm-hmm. where is it i thought i saw it down here somewhere mm-hmm Foundation Center? Was this it? Wait a minute. Oh, you are all on a journey. You're all on a journey with me to uh, check out what available resources are online. And I normally deal with federal grants. So trying to give you a little preview of how to find private foundation grant information it's a little out of my norm but I was kind of curious as to what's out there and uh, hey you can just watch me stumble along and maybe it'll, maybe it'll save you some time down the road when you do your search yeah, so all right the foundation center where is hold on they have are these are these are not links Foundation directory online. Okay, I remember, gosh darn, I remember when I started in the mid-90s, I used to subscribe to the, um, to their hard copy uh, foundation directories, and they were, oh my god, they were these giant, it started out as hardbound, and then they switched to a paperbound edition, they were these giant books. I mean, they, they must have been, they came in two volumes. Each one, I swear, was larger than, like, the New York phone directory. And, great. Okay, it's too that nobody uses phone books anymore. But um, if any of you remember what phone books are like, uh, they were they're massive. And so these these foundation directories, really thin paper, uh, big books, and it was a pain to go through them to try and figure out, uh, you know, what grants were available or, you know, what grants were, were available from which foundations. And if you wanted to, do, you could you could do a search using the hard copy index in the back and you were constantly flipping back and forth between, you know, the subject index in the back of these directories and then flipping through the pages to find the foundation uh, information. I swear, nine times out of ten, it said, you know, does not accept unsolicited proposals. So then you were just going down the list. Oh, my God, how time-consuming. Anyway, so we are back here. Now, you have a choice between the Foundation Directory Professional and Essential. Uh, Each one just kind of gives you a little different information 
Obviously, professional will give you more information than just essential. Um, like, right, for me, just in my opinion, I know it's everyone is different. Uh, the searchable 990s, yeah, you know, you can get this information online in several places for free. Uh, federal grants, you can get all that information online for free. Maps and charts, I'm not even sure what that means. That could just be like a distribution of where the foundations are located, possibly where their projects are located. Um, I mean, were I to purchase one of these, I'd probably go with Essential just to uh, to try it out. But um, these are pricey. So if you hit subscribe, subscribe to the Foundation Directory Online Professional. Ooh, boy, look at that. I mean, for two years, you're paying 87, 87, almost 88 bucks a month. Or you can make a one-time, one-time payment for two years of almost $2,100. Uh, if you don't want to be, uh, you know, tied into anything, you can go 200 bucks a month and cancel any time. That is expensive. Whew. All right. What does essential cost? I hope you're hanging with me. This is uh okay, well, fifty bucks a month. Well, that's better, but um, but still, that might be pretty tight for a lot of new new nonprofits. Uh, fifty bucks a month, six hundred bucks a year. That that can pay for a lot of office supplies or other really essential materials. So maybe, well, that's up to you. I was going to say maybe this is not the best choice. Why can't I get back to Google? Oh, crap. Oh, okay, because a new window opened. All right. Again, you are watching the sausage being made here, folks. Okay. So that's private foundation funds. Uh, you know, the other thing you can do is, if you're interested in federal money, just go over to grants.gov and, whoop, uh, no, I don't want to provide feedback. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Go to grants.gov and they have a whole bunch of YouTube videos on how to apply for federal grants, how to register with grants.gov, the whole learning center. You can search for grants. Okay. I went through this on another video. But what you can also do is say, just do a little search. Come up with this list of grants that have been recently posted. And if any of them, I, mean, I would... Just, um, hold on, there was one. Oh, here we go. Uh, National Institutes of Justice, FY18 Research on Reducing Violence in Communities. I mean, if you're interested in Department of Justice grants, you know, maybe this one isn't a perfect fit for your organization, but... Take a, just you know, just wander around grants.gov. Just take a look, take a look at, at what it looks like. Uh, just experiment with it, play around with it. There's nothing you can't break it. Uh, download, here you go. Download the funding opportunity notice. Uh, you know, see what they look like. Get familiar with their format. What types of information they request. I mean, you know, anything you can do. To just immerse yourself in the process and what type of information, say, the feds or even the private foundations will want, the more familiar you become with it, the better you'll be able to respond to the RFPs, requests for proposals or funding opportunities. Um, and all of this just, it doesn't cost a single dime. It's all free. It just takes time. And I know that... A lot of newer nonprofits, they want to get up and running, you know, 
El Speedy Quick. Um, that was really that was really poor Spanglish. They, I know a lot of nonprofits they want to get going right away, which is cool, but just instead of you know taking the hour or two or three or whatever to search around for free consultants, spend that same time teaching yourself how to do it. I mean, this is so much more useful than than bouncing around and getting rejected by consultants saying, hey, I can't work for free. Uh, teach yourself. There's so much information out there. You know, before work or sp- spend 30 to 60 minutes every day at work just searching around online, uh, you'll find a ton of stuff. When you go home, if you're relaxing after work, watching some reality TV like you know, I'm not saying I do that, but you know, if if I was watching reality TV, I would I would go search search for grant information online. It's um it's not tough. Something you can do anytime day or night. Um and again, it's totally free. You can teach yourself. And if you teach yourself, you're going to learn the process. Your organization will be better positioned um, going forward to hire a consultant down the road when you can afford one because you'll understand the mindset of the grants consultant, what information they'll need from you, how they're going to prepare the application, why they charge what they do. Uh, you're going to learn all kinds of stuff, and maybe you find that you don't need a grants consultant. Maybe Maybe after teaching yourself and submitting, you know, two, three, four, five applications to different foundations, maybe to your state government, maybe to your fed, the federal government, maybe you find, hey, look, we, we thought we needed a consultant. We've turned in a half a dozen applications. We got two of them funded, and we're just going to keep rolling. Uh, you know, two out of six, that ain't bad. Hell, it's pretty good for uh, for beginners. So maybe... You you find that at that time you don't need a consultant, which great, great. I mean that's that's awesome. Uh, okay. So the last thing that you can do for free is go over to Twitter if you're on Twitter every Tuesday from nine a.m. Pacific to twelve noon. I'm sorry, (laughs) it's not a three-hour chat. Uh, Every Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern, there's a one-hour online Twitter conversation called Grant Chat. Over here, just in the little search box up here, search on the hashtag Grant Chat. And let's see, this is the date today. It's March 20th, and today's conversation was about social media and how nonprofits can use it uh, related to funding. Let me see if there's an... Uh Hold on. Wait a minute. Okay, here we go. So here's the topic. How social media increases grant success. Now, here's another free resource because what you have... What you have are a whole bunch of grants professionals coming together one hour a week to talk about the industry, how um, how they work, sharing their ideas, their best practices when they work with clients, how nonprofits uh, can use, well, in this case, social media, uh, how nonprofits can apply for grants. I mean, a, a, whole, a, a whole gamut. They run the gamut of issues, and uh, it's actually pretty interesting stuff. So if you just, even if you just go on, and um, well, like this one person is lurking. Even if you just go on and lurk, and just kind of watch the questions, watch the answers, absorb knowledge, jump in if you feel like it. If you want to ask questions, all of these people are always very willing to answer questions. Um, they all enjoy what they do. They are they are all very professional and um, really good, 
Good people. So Grant Chat is another excellent resource that's totally free. And if you can't, if you can't make it during uh, during the time of the uh, of the Twitter chat, you can do like I'm doing right now. It um, the as I record this, it is 2:33 p.m. Pacific time. So it's what five, five and a half hours, four and a half hours since the uh, Twitter chat ended. But all you have to do is just search on the hashtag, and everything is stored right here. You can go back, check out all the questions, check out all of the answers, and the oh well, all the uh, all the gifs or gifs that people posted along with their answers, which are oftentimes very clever. I have not yet figured out. How to, how to post a, a GIF or a GIF um, to my answers yet, which uh, sometimes, you know, makes me feel a little bit inferior, and I'm, I'm working through that. So anyway, where the hell am I going with this? Um, showed you Grant Chat. Showed you how to Google, how to write a grant proposal. Showed you how to Google how to find private foundation grants. Showed you how to search for grants and the different uh, training, free training resources on grants.gov. Uh, brr, I think that's it. I think that's it. So anyway, I think, you know, like I said in the podcast, my takeaway from all this is if your organization is inexperienced with federal grants or just grants in general, and you can't afford a consultant, just go online and search for those resources that'll teach you how to do it yourself. You know, learning the process, in my mind, is a better use of time than hunting around for pro bono help. If you spend eight hours learning how to prepare grant applications versus contacting a bunch of consultants, at the end of those, the, at the end of those eight hours, you'll have a, a new skill to build upon versus waiting for a callback um, and and stuck at square one of the process. So anyway, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me through my website, thegrantdoctors.com. I will have a link in this video's description. Uh, or you can get me on social media at The Grant Doctors on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Um, I will have a link to my podcast in the description. I will have a, a reminder about the Grant Chat hashtag. Uh, what else? I think that'll do it. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed this stream of consciousness video. <laughs> if, um, if there are any topics related to grants or federal grants, just leave them in the comment section. I always check feedback. Okay, other than that, I think I'm out of here. We are done. So thanks for watching. Like it, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you enjoyed this, and I will catch you on the next video. Okay, bye.